Well, praise the Lord. Amen. Amen. God is good and his mercy endures. How long? Forever. Forever. Amen. Amen. Well, we thank God for this week. It's been a very uh, blessed week so so far. If you don't know why I'm saying that, then um, you can come ask me after service and I'll tell you. But no, I can tell you right now. God is good. Amen. He woke you up this morning. Amen. You, you might have thought you woke up in your own strength, but it wasn't you that got you up. It was God that got you up out of that bed today. And we thank God for his goodness and his mercy, how he loves us and his, his compassion that he shows to us each and every day. You know, I thank God for how good he is to us. I, I, was, I was just so thankful thinking today about how just even just now we're singing, singing these songs unto the Lord. And, you know, I, I mean, I, I really enjoy the musical instruments. I do. I really I love I love listening to to piano. I mean, in, or violins or or pretty much anything except for tambourine. And because I'm pretty bad at that. But anyway, um, yeah, I'm thinking about musical instruments and how wonderful it is. And I thank God that we didn't need it this morning. This morning we sang from our hearts and it was a beautiful, uh, you know, it was a beautiful song to the Lord. See, I didn't say noise. You thought I was going to say that. Make a beautiful noise, you know, make a joyful noise unto the Lord, the scripture says. But amen. All of our singing to the Lord is from the heart. Amen. amen. Now, if you were just singing today as an audition for something, I'm sorry. But when you sing to the Lord from your heart, it's a beautiful thing. And each of you were singing that way today to the Lord. And it's a, it's a wonderful thing. Make a joyful noise unto the Lord. Amen and amen. I think there's still hope for my tambourine playing. <laughs> now they took it away a long time ago. Genesis chapter 1. That's where we're going today. Now, some of you might be saying, man, we're spending a lot, a lot of time in Genesis chapter 1. Well, that's true. We are spending a lot of time in Genesis chapter 1. But there's a lot to learn in Genesis chapter 1. You know, sometimes people just breeze right through and, and they're like, okay, we, we just read about how God created everything. Now we're pressing on. We're, let's get into, you know, get further in. But let me, let me tell you, if you go too fast in the scripture and you're just, you're just going to speed read, you're going to miss what God's got for you. How many times have you read a passage and then come back to that passage and been like, whoa, wait a minute. I didn't see that before. How's that? You know, so, yeah, because God shows you. Amen. So let's go to the Lord in prayer. Heavenly Father, we thank you and praise you for this day. Thank you and praise you. Lord, everything that we do, anything that we do, we depend on you for. Lord, we can't do nothing of our own strength. If it's our own strength, we will fail every time. But God, in you we trust, in you we lean, in you we depend. We need you, Lord God, because you guide us, direct us, lead us in everything. Lord, your word is so precious to us. We depend upon your word today, Lord. Your word is unchanging. It endures forever, and we thank you for that. We thank you, Lord, that you are the same yesterday, today, and forever. We, we give you praise and glory and thanks for all things. You, O oh God, made everything. You made us. And we thank you. We thank you for preserving us and we thank you for preserving lives in this nation. We thank you for the, 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 the ruling by the Supreme Court this just last week to preserve lives. Amen. And God, we just ask, Lord, that you would help us in this nation to value life. Lord, I just pray that you would give people a passion for you, a love for one another. Lord, I pray that this would, would continue on and people, you would turn their hearts back to you. I pray for our government in Washington, D.C., here in Olympia. You know, I pray that they would turn their hearts to you, Lord. That they would abandon wickedness, abandon the, the path of darkness that they're on, and turn to you, the only source of light and life. I pray that they would repent of their sins and trust Christ as Savior and Lord. And God, I just give these, these, uh, these government officials to you, Lord, to your hands. You said in your word, Lord, that you turn the hearts of kings by your, by your hand. You turn their hearts. We ask that you would turn our, the hearts of those in leadership in this nation back to you. We just pray this in Jesus' precious name. We ask your blessings upon your word today in Jesus' name. Amen and amen. God is the creator. Amen. And he created all things. When you have a grasp of what that means, that God is the creator, it, you know what it's, it's going to do for your life? You're going to be able to... To sit back and say, you know what? I'm, why am I stressing about this? 
How many times have you had things happen in your life that's beyond your control, out of your control, and you said, oh, what am I going to do? I'm perplexed. I don't know. You know what? You don't need to do that. When you, re when you remember that God is the one who made everything, that God holds you in his hand, that you're precious in his sight. Because why? Because you love the Lord Jesus Christ. You've accepted God's peace offer. God has offered peace to all mankind. He says, here's, here's my offer of peace. Here's my terms of peace. Jesus. He's willing to forgive. He's willing to forgive you today. If you don't know that he's willing to forgive you, I'm telling you, he's willing to forgive you today. It says in Genesis chapter 1, down to verse 14, it says, And God said, Let there be lights in the firmament of heaven to divide the day from the night, and let them be for signs and for seasons and for days and years, and let them be for lights in the firmament of the heaven to give light upon the earth. And it was so. And God made two great lights the greater light to rule the day and the lesser light to rule the night. He made the stars also. And God set them in the firmament of heaven to give light upon the earth and to rule over the day and over the night to divide the light from the darkness. And God saw that it was good. The evening and the morning were the fourth day. Now, here's the interesting thing, and you may have missed this. Do you remember that God had created light? You remember that? That he did that a little earlier in the chapter? In back, if you go back a little bit, you can say in verse 3, he says, And God said, Let there be light, and there was light. And God saw the light, that it was good. And God divided the light from the darkness. And he called the light day, and the darkness he called night. And the evening and morning were the first day. You see that back in the first day, he creates light. And then here, you see him doing something with light again. What's he doing with light? He says, now he says, let there be lights in the firmament of heaven to divide the day from the night. Let them be for signs, for seasons, and for days, and for years. And let them be for lights in the firmament of heaven to give light upon the earth. And God made two great lights. So he takes the light that he has created, and he makes two great lights out of that. What, which two lights are they? Great lights, greater light to rule the day. What do you call that thing that's outside there? Sun. sun. We don't see it very often in Washington, so it's good when we do. It's the sun. Amen. And at night, what is, the, what is the lesser light to rule the night? What do we call that? The moon. Amen. And he made the stars also. You know, you know how many stars there are? Neither do I. Amen. Yeah, you can't count them. There's so many. And yet God names every one of them. He gives every one of them a name. Isn't that amazing? That you can't, it's, it's the same promise when he talked to Abraham about how his offspring would be. It's the sand of the sea, the stars in the, in the sky. You know, it's innumerable. Why is that? Because people would come to Christ. Not just the children of Israel, not just the Jewish people, but also every person that puts their faith and trust in Jesus Christ is now eligible to be adopted in the family of God. Amen? That's good news for you and I. Let them be a firmament. Let there be lights in the firmament of heaven to divide the day from the night. Let them be for signs and for seasons, for days and for years. So he tells us the purpose of the lights that he puts in heaven. What is the purpose? Timekeeping. How do we tell time? By the sun and the moon, right? I mean, that's how we're telling time. If we didn't have that, we wouldn't know what time it is. Have you ever been to Alaska? Anybody been to Alaska? I just went to Alaska recently. And guess what? It's always light there right now. It's daylight like all the time. So if you're outside without a watch on, it's really hard to tell what time it is. Well, yes, unless you have a cell phone. That is true. <laughs> Amen. You, if you don't have a cell phone and you don't have a watch, then you don't know what time it is because it could be any time. Because it's, the lights, it's light all the time. The same thing, they have a time in Alaska where there's darkness most all the time. And, and that's also the same kind of situation. So God gives us sun and the moon. You know, he gives them in the, for what? For signs, for seasons, days, and years. So we're able to make a calendar. We're able to figure out how, how many days that we need to have on a calendar. We, need to, we are able to tell what day of the, of the month it is, what time during the day it is. We can do all of these things because God has put these instruments in heaven for us. Did he do it for himself? No, he did it for us. He doesn't need to tell time. You know, he's eternal. Amen? I mean, he's forever. He, he doesn't need somebody to tell him what time it is. He doesn't have to check his watch or his cell phone. He knows what time it is. And he sets time for us. We are in time. God is eternal, so he's outside of time. He created it. He's not bound by it. That's why it's so cool. He's the same yesterday, today, and forever. You know, right now we're in 
we're in, we're in time right now. You understand? We're in time. Time, we're subject to that. If you don't believe that, just wait a few years. You'll figure that out. It's subject to time. Time has an effect on all of us. Amen? But there's a day coming down the road where the Bible tells us the interval of time is no more. You know, there's a day coming where it's an eternal day. When Christ will make a new heavens and a new earth, there'll be no more sun, there'll be no more moon, because he's the light. God is the light of it. And, and we, it is an eternal situation. You will enter eternity. It'll be eternal, never dying. Never growing old, never getting, getting hurt. As kids, you don't realize, realize this yet, but in a few years, you're going to find out that the older you get, the more aches and pains you get. It's kind of weird, but it, it works like that. And anybody can say amen to that? Amen. amen. Okay. And the things that you used to be able to do, you can't do anymore. Amen. Used to be able to run. I can't run fast as I used to run. I can't do this. Why? Because that's, that's a natural thing of our bodies. But, you know, thank God for that. I thank God for that. I don't know about you, but I get excited about it now. I, I used to not think that way, but now I think that way. I'm like, wow, you know what this means? I'm getting closer to seeing Jesus. I'm getting closer to that day. One of these days, whether it's the trumpet sounds and we all go, or whether he calls your name and you go. Amen? There's a day coming where each one of us is going to die. And when we die, the Bible tells us to be absent from the bodies, to be present with the Lord. And I'm looking forward to that day. I'm not afraid of death. I'm not looking out there looking for it. If I was out there looking for it, I'd go find a grizzly bear and start poking at it. But I'm not doing that. Amen? What I'm doing is, is I'm excited because I'm not fearful. There's no fear in the Lord. There's no fear when you have eternal life, when you know that Jesus Christ is your Savior, when you know that He's forgiven you of your sins, when you know that He's given you new life, there's no more fear of death. But there's just joy. There's just joy knowing that when I pass from this life, I get to be with my Lord. I get to see him face to face. So I'm looking forward to that day. Now, I'm also looking forward to the fact that Jesus Christ is coming back. Amen. One of these days, the trumpet sound is going to sound and, and it, those who are, are alive and remain will be caught up together with him to meet the Lord in the air. And man, oh man, that's going to be a good trip. Amen. Amen? You don't have to be afraid of flying. That's going to be a good day. So, I don't know. I'm just, I'm excited about that. So, uh, verse 15 says, And let them be for lights of the firmament of heaven to give light upon the earth. You know, I'm thankful for light. I'm thankful. You know, we have some hot days. Make sure you're hydrating because it's going to get hot out there. But I'm thankful for light. Because it's a whole lot easier to walk around when, it, when it's light. If you guys ever walk when it's dark outside and you can't see where you're going, guess what happens? You start tripping and falling over stuff. I have things in my garden that I like. I have a lot of rocks and stuff, and we have some little, um, what is it, solar lights and stuff. And when the solar lights are not working and it's nighttime, well, you know, it could be dangerous because you could trip. And, I mean, I've tripped outside. Well, I've tripped in the house too, but never mind. That's a different thing. But, you know, I've tri you know tripping outside, and when it's dark, it's easy to happen. But when it's light, you get to see where you're going. You're less likely to, to, to trip up and fall down. God has made these to give light upon the earth. You know what happens when you have light on the earth? Things grow. In Washington State, we got a lot of water, don't we? Get a lot of rain. And once we get a little bit of this sunshine out here, what happens? Everything just grows. It just gets beautiful. Amen? When, when the light shines, you got that nourishment of the water and the, and the soil and all those good things are there. And the, the, the sunlight comes down, man, it just feeds everything and it just blossoms and grows. When you're rooted and grounded in the word of truth, walking in the light of the Lord, you're going to blossom and grow. You're going to, you, the fruit that comes out of your life is going to be a blessing. Amen? You're going to be walking in a way that's pleasing unto God. You know, we, he, we're, we are the, the plants of his right hand planting. He, we, we are, we are that, that garden. You know, I walk in the garden alone. You know, you're not alone when you're walking in the garden. He's with you, right? Amen. Physically, you might you might look around and see nobody's around, but he's there. He's there. I was out there the other day uh, on the base, and I don't I do disc golf. I don't know if you guys know what that is. It's with frisbees and things, and it's like golf but with frisbees. And uh, they have a course on the base. It's a small one, and there's usually no one there. It's that popular. And um, but anyway, so but it's a nice place to walk, and it's very sunshiny and it's great. And I got out there. And 
this was right after I just had learned the news about uh, Roe versus Wade being overturned. And I just, it was so great to have time with God to just thank him, to thank him for that, to thank him for it. That was God's hand. We had 60 million babies killed in this nation because of that ruling to, to begin with. And now there's children out there, they'll have a chance of life because of it, because it got overturned. Thank God for that. If you don't think it's a big deal, well, I, I, I mean, you got to start thinking about life. Amen? Every life is precious. Every life is precious. And thanks, thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord. Now, that being said, pray for these legislators in this state and in others. Pray for them, that they'll see that, that life is precious, that life is needed and necessary. God made two great lights, a greater light to rule the day, a lesser light to rule the night. He made the stars also. Psalm 147. See, that's the sound right there. It's a good sound. Psalm 147. Psalm 147, if you get there before I do. Amen. Just wait a second. Psalm 147, verses 4 and 5. He telleth the number of the stars. He calleth them all by their names. Great is our Lord and of great power. His understanding is infinite. How much understanding does God have? He's infinite in understanding. Amen. He calls, he numbers the stars and calls them by their names. Now, we can't do that. If you were to start counting stars, like if you could count them all, it'd take you your entire life and you still wouldn't be done counting. And yet God knows them all. He counts them all. He, he names them all. Now, that's pretty significant. That's pretty important. That God would identify each one of these stars that he puts in heaven. And why did he put them there? To be lights, what? For the earth. You know, it's an amazing thing. When you start looking at creation from the way that God's, God has laid it out to us, that you understand that, that he started out here. You know, there's no other solar system that's like ours. They, you know, they're like, well, maybe this planet might support life or that planet might support life. But it, it is interesting as you, as you look at um, astronomy how that this solar system is so unique, that this planet is so unique in all of what we can see so far. It's not a dead rock. It's not one with, with you know, liquid atmosphere that, that we can't, you know, that wouldn't sustain life. It's a perfectly planted earth. In the heavens. And it's one with life. Isn't that amazing? You know, they went to the moon and you know what they found? Rocks. They found rocks. They sent this thing to Mars and you know what's on Mars? More rocks. If you're a rock collector, that's good news. But if you're looking for human, human beings walking around, you're going to find them in one place right here on Earth where God put them. It's pretty easy to understand. What about UFOs, brother? What about, we've seen this UFO, what about that? Yep, Satan, fallen angels, demons, to, in order to get you led away from God. You know, I was in the Air Force for a lot of years, for 22 years, as a matter of fact, and that was active duty, and I've been in the Air Force as a civilian for 12 years. And you know what I've never seen the whole time? UFOs. Because they don't exist. There's, it's Satan's ploy. It's his plan. It's his trap to deceive people into thinking that there is. Why do you think every one of these science fiction shows that they come up with and create never give credit to God? It's always to, you know, some, some strange alien species, Right? They don't want to tell you that God created everything. They'd rather come up with some crazy idea just like, uh, what's his name? Uh, Bill Nye came up with it. Oh, you know, we're children of the stars. No. You know, we're made out of stuff that stars are made out of. You're made out of dirt. 
the dust of the ground. Do the check. It'll come out positive. That's where you that's where you that's where God formed us out of with his own hands. Breathed into us a breath of life. It's amazing that they would embrace weird things like we come from Mars or anything other than what God has laid out. And oh, by the way, God proves it. All of creation speaks to his hand of creation. There's no way that any of this is all of this is just random happenstance. And and here's the thing that's even crazier to me that, that a that a scientist would even go there. They understand what matter is. Scientists understand matter. That matter never goes away, it just changes form. Like water to vapor and back to water again. It changes form. So if they think that there's a big bang, let me ask the question, where'd the matter come from? Because in order to have a bang, you have to have matter. Where'd it come from? You see, they can't explain it because they don't want to go with the easiest explanation. You know, the easiest explanation is usually always the right one. God said he made it. That's who did it. He, he says from the beginning, he, he says he calls the ending, he names what he's going to do at the ending from the beginning, and he proves it. Every prophecy that Jesus fulfilled. Amen? The astronomical, you know, the astronomical uh, chances that, that a one person could fulfill all the things that Christ did, it, it's, it's mind-blowing. You couldn't do it if you tried, but Jesus did it because he's God. He says, from the beginning, they call out that all of the things, all of the prophecies, that he'd be born of a virgin, he'd be born in Bethlehem, that he would die on a cross. The, the Psalms, Psalm 22, lays out exactly what would happen when, when he was on the cross. And that's what happened. Isaiah 53. The Bible tells us very clearly everything that we need if you only open it up and read it. That's why I have to reject the, the, when people say, oh, well, the beginning was there was millions of years between each day. No, he says, you know, the evening and the morning were the first day. Evening and the morning were the second day. Evening and the morning were the third day. Evening and the morning is 24 hours. It's not millions of years. And he lays the same words in Hebrew for evening and morning. The same day words is, is used throughout all of it. Throughout all of it. It didn't take millions of years for, for Moses to, to get over to the promised land, or not to get into the promised land, because he didn't go into it, because, uh, because he got angry. Struck the rock rather than speaking to the rock. That's important. We'll get to that later on. Not today, but another time. But, you know, the thing is, every time in Scripture that it's mentioned a day, it's a day. It's a day. It's not... Millions of years. So you can't try to please scientists with adding in, you know, you know, conjecture into the word of God and trying to pacify these guys. They're never going to they're never going to. They don't believe it to begin with. So you can't change what God has said to accommodate people. This is why today people want you to change what's what God has said is right and wrong. People want you to change. Let me just tell you, if God made you a man, you're a man. If God made you a woman, you're a woman. And if you go and get surgically altered, it doesn't change who you are. You're still the same man or woman that you were. You just surgically mutilated yourself. It doesn't change who you are. If God says the model is male and female, is a, is a, you know, a marriage, male, it's between a male and a female, guess what? That's what it is. It's his model. He's the creator. He has a right to lay the rules out on, the, on the, the floor. If you say, well, you know, I don't agree with that, you're not the creator. He is. And so I'm sorry if, if this offends you. I apologize. I apologize if this offends you. But it's still the truth. Paul says, I therefore become your enemy because I tell you the truth. Too many times pastors are accommodating the world getting politically correct because their fear of being, uh, you know, ostracized or fear of being, you know, people saying stuff. You know, I don't care about all that. What I do care about is what does God say? What does God say? Because you know what? You know what God has given for pastors? The responsibility for teaching the truth. Preaching the truth. What does he say in his word? 
This is what judges us, guys. The word. Not me. I'm not going to judge you. You don't, you're supposed to judge yourself. The word of God judges us. The word of God. I'm going to point out what it says. You're going to point out what it says. Because you know what? God is true. He's not a liar. He tells us. So today, I mean, I'm just sidetracked on that. But, you know, I'm just telling you, it's, it's a sad thing because today people want to be um, politically correct. But they forget that you need to be biblically correct. Amen. God says, don't add to his word lest you be found a liar. Amen. So stick to the word. I mean, if he's using that's that's what he's going to use to judge you. Don't you think that you ought to find out what it says? Daddy, I think that'd be probably smart. It, when we went to um, Okinawa, Marsha and I went to Okinawa one time. We lived there for three years. Um, when we went there and we needed to drive a car. And when we got there, we bought a car and then we, we found out the licensing procedures and we got the license and they gave you um, a neat little sticker you put in your window. It was green and yellow and it looked like an arrow. And that signifies that you're an expert driver. It's because you're an American, you're an expert driver automatically. You're an expert driver. That means if you get in no accident, it's your fault. If somebody runs into the back of your car, that's your fault. If you happen to be driving down the road and somebody sideswipes you, that's your fault because you're an expert driver. Now, it would have been a bad thing if we'd have been in Okinawa and I, wouldn't, I would have went and got a car and I wouldn't have found out about that, uh, that little detail in their law. Because then if I wouldn't have been trying nearly as hard to avoid accidents, right? I mean, I don't want to get in an accident, but I really found out, when I found out that, man, I was avoiding everything. I was like, wait. And here's another clue. If you ever go to Okinawa, if you happen to ever be there and you're driving a car and you're at a stoplight, when it turns green, do not step on your gas. Wait. Wait. Because you will see a car come flying through the intersection every time. They think red is, okay, I got a few seconds to get through. So I, but honestly speaking, the law is important for you to learn about because you avoid issues. You avoid problems. But it was our responsibility to learn the law. It wasn't their responsibility. They're still going to hold me to the standard. You're an expert driver. You're an American. You got a license from the U.S. You're an expert driver. We're holding you to that standard. It didn't matter whether I agreed with it. You know what? I could have identified myself as an amateur driver, and I'm still considered an expert driver. Didn't matter what I said. I, I, you know, well, I personally identify as an amateur. Doesn't matter. You're still held to the standard of being an expert driver in Okinawa. Why is that important? Because God holds us to a standard. You can agree with it. You can disagree with it. It doesn't change the fact that that's the standard. Today, we, we, for some reason, think that any governmental regulation or rule or law that's passed, that's the standard. That's not the standard. The Word of God is the standard. So, you know, I'm sorry. Pass every, any law you want, but you pass them laws that are contrary to what God said, I'm sticking with what God said. Amen. I'm sticking with God. Because at the end of the day, all the kingdoms of this world will fall away to the kingdom of our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ. And you cannot, cannot, cannot ever compromise. The church has been doing way too much of that. But walking in love is crucially important. Because the world is at war with, the, with God and at war with themselves. You have to walk in love as a Christian. As a Christian, if you know the truth of the word, you know that, that Jesus came to save Right? That God is not willing that any perish but all come to repentance. God is a God of love. And you have to show and demonstrate the love of God to everyone. He says to love the Lord your God with all your heart, soul, mind, and strength. To love your neighbor as yourself. And if you're not walking in love, you're not walking in obedience to God. So we walk in love. We speak the truth in love. We preach the word in love. But we still preach it. 
we still speak it. Go into all the world and preach the gospel to every creature. You do it in love. Amen? We're no better than anyone else. All have sinned and fall short of the glory of God. Every one of us. Every one of us. But God sent Jesus to save us from our sins. To forgive us. To wash us. He set the sun and and the moon and stars up in, it's in heaven. It says, God set them in the firmament of heaven to give light upon the earth. Right now, that's, that's a wonderful thing. We have the light. We see the sun. We can see the moon at night. We can see, uh, even sometimes during the day, the moon you can still see. Um, and then even uh, the stars, you got to wait till nighttime mostly. But there'll be a day, and there's a day coming, that some things are going to change. In Matthew chapter 24, if you look at that real quick. Matthew 24. And the future, this is going to happen. Uh, chapter, tw- or chapter 24, verse 29. Immediately after the tribulation of those days shall the sun be darkened, and the moon shall not give her light, and the stars shall fall from heaven, and the powers of the heavens shall be shaken. And then shall appear the sign of the Son of Man in heaven. And then shall all the tribes of the earth mourn, and they shall see the Son of Man coming in the clouds of heaven with, great, with power and great glory. See, Jesus is coming. And when Jesus returns to this world, guess what he's bringing? He's bringing the wrath of God. This is why they're mourning. You know, for Christians, for us, we're rejoicing, right? We want Jesus to come. Man, we're waiting. We're, we're ready. We're ready. If you're not ready to go, let me tell you, get ready. Okay? Be ready. Be, be ready to go. Be looking for him. At every day, every hour, every minute, be looking in anticipation for the return of the Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ. Be looking for him. Be waiting, Lord. It could be today. Have that desire, that heart, waiting. But the, the world, they're not going to be too happy about that. Because they love sin. They love wickedness. And they know that's accountability. God is coming to judge. It's the same thing when you get pulled over. You drive it down the road a little too fast. You get pulled over. Because you broke the law. And that feeling that comes up on you like, I know, I just did wrong and I just got caught. I'm about to pay a ticket. Amen? Accountability. Accountability. See, there's a day of accountability coming. Before the world was flooded, Noah was warning the world. The Bible called him a preacher of righteousness. 120 years took to build the ark. Can you imagine if it never rained and somebody's building an ark? A giant boat? And then you see him loading animals into the boat. And the whole time they're telling you, because he's a preacher of righteousness, he's preaching of what's right. We don't have recorded here in Scripture what he told them, but he, we do know that he was a preacher of righteousness, so he was preaching. 120 years, building this ark. It's a testimony. There's a flood coming. And yet only eight people survived. His family. How about today? How many friends and neighbors do you have that don't know Jesus? How many relatives do you have that don't know Jesus? Please tell them about Jesus. Tell them. This week I had the opportunity to talk about the Lord to, uh, what was it, two people in my office? Just just on one day. On one day I had two, two different people in my office I was able to talk to about the Lord. And it was great. I talked to one one people was a, a fellow believer who really hadn't talked. I hadn't talked to very much because I hadn't seen them very much. Saw him that day and he came in and we started talking about the Lord and we started talking about his word. And we and I thank God that he had it right. He says, you know, we need to be in the Bible. I said, amen. You need to be back in the Bible. That's the problem the church has today is they're not in the Bible. So they don't know. If you see what's happening, what the scripture outlines is what's going to happen in those days, immediately after the tribulation of the days, the sun will be dark and the moon will not give her light, the stars will fall from heaven, the powers of the heavens will be shaken. You know, the Bible tells us he's going to roll up the heavens, the sky is a scroll. Think about that. You know that's coming. I mean, that's for real coming. That's going to happen. That is for sure going to happen. What are you doing not telling somebody about Jesus? You've got to tell them. 
Well, but what if they get mad? I'd rather they get mad at me than them go to hell. I'd rather them be mad at me than, than, than asking me why didn't I ever tell them. Don't let somebody go to hell because you didn't tell them about Jesus. Be faithful to plant the seed and water the seed. If they turn to God, awesome. If they don't turn to God, that's between them and the Lord. You've done your job, what you're supposed to do. Pray for them. Tell them. Be faithful. We don't have an indefinite amount of time on this earth, by the way. Just like he put this, the sun and the moon and the stars up there to tell time, we understand that our time is limited. The Bible tells us that our lives are like a vapor. It appears for a little bit of time, and then it's gone. If you don't believe that, think about how many people that are not here anymore that you know. Man's life is very short on this earth. And so while we have life, let us use our lives to tell others about the Lord, that they can have eternal life as well. Because we're only here for a little bit of time. Has anybody ever played sports at all? Any sports like baseball or football or anything? Have you ever played any sports? And when you were playing sports, did you go out there and say, you know, I don't really care if we win or lose. I'm just going to just, you know, give, just give a little bit of, you know. No, you, you go out there and you try, to, you try to do your best. If you don't do your best, what are you doing out there? Right? Right? Because it's a team sport, too, by the way. Most of the sports, not every sport. Some sports are not, but most sports are team sports. So every member of the team has got to be doing their part in order for you to be victorious, to win. Right? Even running a race, if, you were, if, you, if you're doing like a, uh, what's it when they, they hand off the, the baton? The relay. Relay race. You know, you could have, you have four people on that relay, and three people are like, we're in this, we're, we're going to give it our best. And you got the last guy, he's like, you know, I'm not really into this today. I'm kind of tired. I don't want to beat anybody to the finish line. I might offend someone. So I'm just going to, you know, I'm just going to walk. Was that a great team player? That's kind of lazy, amen. That's kind of lazy, exactly. You got to be all in. And so in this race that we're running as Christians, in this, in this effort that we're doing for the Lord, we want to be faithful, good stewards of the time that God has given to us. We want to give God our best. We want to give Him our all. And so give God everything. While you live, give Him everything. Don't regret at the end of your days to look back and say, oh, I wish I would have done this harder. I wish I would have worked harder. I wish I would have preached harder. I wish I would have prayed harder. I wish I would have shared more. I wish I would have done this. Don't have that regret. Don't have it. Be like Paul. What did he say? I fought a good fight. I finished the course. I kept the faith. Let that be your testimony at the end of your days. Let that be your testimony. Amen? Amen? Let's pray. Dear Heavenly Father, we thank you and praise you, Lord, so much for your goodness, mercy, love, kindness, compassion. Lord, we give you praise for you alone are worthy. Lord, all of us are, are, have fallen short in so many ways and so many times in our lives. And God, we need you so much. We have so many friends and families that are yet still walking in, in darkness people that we know, acquaintances on jobs that don't know you. Lord, it's our desire that they would come to know you as Savior, that they would experience the joy that you give, the peace that you give, the love that you give, that mercy that you give. Lord, it's our prayer that we could be used by you to share your word to as many as we can while we can. Help us, Lord, to be faithful to be good stewards of the time that you've given to us in our lives. Lord, realizing that we were bought with a price, that we are not our own. Lord, that we are crucified with Christ. Nevertheless, we live yet not us, but Christ lives in us. Lord, please help us today as, as a church to be in this together, around Jesus and around your word, to, to go forward victorious, in this world, the things of this world are falling apart. The, the kingdoms of this world are falling down. But Lord, we know there's a day coming that you are going to rule and reign here on this earth. And we're looking forward to that day. Lord, help us to be faithful until you till you come. Lord, and if if you if you if you delay your time, 
and we end up dying before that day, Lord, it's our prayer that we would be faithful to the end. Then in our lives, we would put it all out there for you. Lord, help us to hold nothing back in our lives, but to yield them all to you. And we just pray this in Jesus' name. Amen and amen. Let's turn in our hymnals to number 526. And let's stand and sing, He Lives, 526. <clears throat> Wait till I find it. Yeah. Okay. I serve a risen Savior. He's in the world today. I know that He is living. Whatever men may say, I see His hand of mercy. I hear His voice of cheer. And just the time I need Him. Heavenly Father, we thank you and praise you for your goodness, mercy, and love. Lord, we thank you that Jesus Christ, our Savior, lives, and he lives in us today. And Lord, we just ask that your blessings, your, your mercies would be on each one. Give them traveling mercy going home, Lord, please. God, we thank you and praise you for all things. You are worthy to be praised, and we give you thanks today. In Jesus' name, amen and amen. May God bless you. Oh, praise the Lord. <laughs> you need to tell them next week when we get to verse 20 that the weathermen last week were reading the Bible. And it says, and God said, let the waters abundantly bring forth life. Yes. Things that crawling creatures.
did you hear him predicting about the onslaught of the mosquitoes because of all the standing water? <laughs> Randy, there From you go. From those recent rains. That's so funny. Yeah. Uh, hey, um, good job today. Yeah. <laughs> it, went, it went well. God bless you.